If you were able to fully understand the one-period binomial model, you wouldn't have much problem with the two-period binomial model, which is simply an extension of the one-period model. So, going back to our last example where the up factor is 1.25 and the down factor is 0.8, we get the possible stock prices at the end of the second period, which is the expiration date of the option. The two-period model can be seen as a combination of three single-period models. We work backwards until we get the value of the option today. For a European call option with two years to maturity and strike price at $45, the value at expiration would be the maximum of zero and the spot minus strike price. So these are the various possible values at expiration for the call option based on the possible spot prices. Let's first calculate the value of the call option at this node, which follows exactly what we've learned for the one period binomial model. Based on the probabilities of up move and down move, we have the expected value of the call option. Discount it back using the discount rate of 7%, we have a value of 20.444. Likewise, for the other node, we perform the same steps. We get a value of 2.804. And back to today, we perform the same steps as another one-period binomial model. This works up to $12.51. This is the no arbitrage value of the European call option at this point. Likewise, we can use the same approach for put options. Now's your turn to practice. Value the equivalent put option with strike price at $45 using the two-period binomial approach. You should find this considerably less tedious than for the call option, as many of the values are zero. The first node here will simply be zero as well. The value for the second node works out to 4.86. Repeat the steps for the current node and we get a value of 1.817 for the put option. So far we've been studying the valuation of European options, which can only be exercised at expiration. So how would the approach be different for an equivalent American option which can be exercised at any time before expiration. To help us with our understanding, let's revisit this short snippet from Level 1 about the differences in valuation for American versus European options. Thus far, the pricing principles that we've discussed are all based on European options. Is there any difference when it comes to pricing American options? Recall that the only difference between European and American options is that a holder of an American option has the right to exercise prior to expiration, while European options can only be exercised at expiration. So feature-wise, an American option is essentially a European option, with the added feature of the right to exercise before the expiration date. At expiration, the right to exercise before the expiration date obviously becomes of no value. Therefore, both types of options are equivalent and they'll have the same value. Their exercise value at expiration will either be zero or the amount that they are in the money. Before expiration, the prices of European and American options will be equal unless the right to exercise prior to expiration has positive value. The first principle to note is that in theory, this value can never be negative. This is because an American option can never have a lower value than its European counterpart. An American option holder can always choose not to exercise until the expiration date, that is, to hold it like a European option. So what we need to discuss is, what are the factors that can cause this right to have a positive value? One possible factor is in the benefits of holding the underlying. If the underlying is a stock and pays dividends, when a stock goes ex-dividend, its price instantaneously falls. The dividend goes to the short. An investor holding a call option may find it worthwhile to exercise the call just before the stock goes ex-dividend. The capture of the dividend, thereby avoiding the ex-dividend drop in the price of the underlying, can make early exercise worthwhile. If the underlying is a bond, 
coupon interest can also motivate early exercise. One factor that can run counter to the positive effects of such cash flow is if holding the underlying incurs significant carrying costs. Carrying costs lend a preference for holding the option for a longer period over holding the underlying. In any case, remember that such holding cost effects cannot be so great that it makes the American valued less than a European, as an American call option holder can hold on to the option till expiration. The effects are reversed for the put option. As the long put is holding the underlying in this case, cash flows like dividends and interest makes it more appealing for the long to hold onto the option. This therefore has a negative effect on the value on the right to exercise before expiration. Carrying costs, on the other hand, have a positive effect on this value. The next factor we're going to discuss applies only to put options. Let's revisit an exceptional scenario for put options that we've discussed in a previous lesson. If the underlying falls to just $1, the maximum upside is just $1 for a put option with a $30 exercise price, but the maximum downside is losing the entire $29 that is in the money. A European long put will wish to be enabled to exercise as quickly as possible. While an American put option can be exercised immediately in such a case, and that places a premium on the American put. So, to sum up, for a call option on a non-dividend paying stock, there is no difference in valuation between American and European call options. Essentially, you should value the American call option like it is a European call option. But, as illustrated earlier, there can be situations for put options where the possibility of an early exercise is of value to the option holder. For an American put option that is in the money, it may carry a significant premium over the equivalent European option. To illustrate how to determine the value of such put options, let's go back to our last example. If this is an American put option, it can be exercised even at t equals to 1. Let's study if there is any advantage in exercising the put option at this point. If the option holder exercises when the spot price is $62.50, he receives nothing. Obviously, this is not a good point to exercise. However, if the option holder exercises when the spot price is $40, he receives $5. This is higher than the value of the option at this point. Therefore, we would value an American option to have a P-minus value of $5 instead of $4.86. Make the calculations based on a value of $5 for this node, we get 1.869. This is the value of the American put option, which is slightly higher than the European option. Let's pause for an exercise. A European put option on a stock that expires in two years has an exercise price of $102. The underlying stock currently trades at $100 and the risk-free rate is $2.5. Using the following up and down factors and their respective probabilities, Construct a two-period binomial interest rate tree and estimate the value of the European put option. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, let's construct the two-period binomial tree, which you should have no problem constructing based on the up and down factors. At expiration, the value of the put options are as such. You should be quite happy to see the number of zeros. P plus should be 0 also. Traversing backwards, you should get P minus as $20.39. Traverse backwards again, the value of the put option is $10.94. Now, let's say it's an American put option instead. What should be the value of the American option? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. An American option may be exercised at this stage, so we should determine if the early exercise is of any value. Looking at this node where the spot price is $80, the put option can be exercised for $22. This is higher than the value for an equivalent European option, 
so we replace this with $22. Traverse backwards, the American option should have a value of $11.80. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.